Hi, it's good to be with you again. Last year, we devoted our Advent video series to Ukraine. Who could have imagined that this year there would be two horrible wars raging in the world? There's so much darkness all around us that it's difficult to know where to direct our attention or our efforts to try to bring some light. So this Advent, I've chosen to stay very close to home and to spend it with our foundress, St. John Jugan. Several important events in her life took place during winter, and I'm hoping that reflecting on them can help us to grow spiritually as we prepare for Christmas. I'd like to begin with John Jugan's founding gesture, which took place in the winter of 1839. We don't know the precise date of this very important event, but her biography recounts that it happened at the outset of winter, and so I would assume it was during Advent. At this point, Jeanne was already 47 years old. As a much younger woman, she had voiced the conviction that God wanted her for himself for a work as yet unfounded. But many years had gone by since that moment of youthful enthusiasm, and Jeanne had not yet figured out what that meant. She was living in a very modest second floor apartment in St. Servan with a friend older than herself and a teenage orphan who had been confided to her care. These three women, aged 47, 72, and 17, followed a common rhythm of prayer as each one worked to earn a living. St. Servan in 1839 was not the vacation mecca it is today. It was a fishing town overrun by the poor. Jean's biography recounts that of 10,000 souls living there, only about 600 families found themselves in relatively easy circumstances. Jean Jugan frequented this world of the poor, helping them however she could in her comings and goings. On that unknown but fateful day in 1839, Jean was inspired to do more than just help the poor. She gave her whole life over to them by taking in an old woman who found herself alone and unable to care for herself. We know that Jean Jugan carried her home and up the narrow, winding staircase to her apartment, placed her in her own bed, and adopted her as her mother. With the care and attention of the three roommates, this old woman, whose name was Anne, gradually grew stronger. Before long, a second old woman came knocking, and John and her companions welcomed her into their home as well. From then on, John and her younger roommate would sleep on straw on the floor in the attic, which was reached by a narrow ladder in the kitchen, which is still there today. When we go on pilgrimage to this apartment, we always remove our shoes, just as they surely did, and climb into the attic where they prayed and slept. There are two aspects of this scene that I'd like to emphasize in relation to Advent. First, I find it amazing that John Jugan allowed her life to be disrupted and forever changed at 47. In her day, she would have already been considered past her prime, and yet she allowed herself to be touched by God's grace in a totally life-changing way. Jean could have said, oh, not me, Lord, I'm too old, or I'm not prepared for this, I don't have any money, my house is too small, I can't really take this on. But she didn't. Jean Chigan accepted God's challenge, totally giving the little that she had. I think this is a good lesson for us. Sometimes we're afraid that we don't have what it takes and we may shy away from God's call. But if we trust in God, like Jean Jugan did, he will be able to do great things in and through us. The other thing that's very striking to me is that although we don't know the date of our congregation's founding, we do know the names of the first two old women, Anne Chauvin and Isabel Carew. For Jean Jugan, the poor were not anonymous charity cases, but individuals with names, faces, and personalities. During this Advent season, 
We may have opportunities to give to the poor, but some of these opportunities are quite remote or anonymous. We might make an online donation to a charity or pull a tag off a Christmas tree at church, but often enough, we never meet the recipient of our charity. During this season of exchanging gifts and doing good, I hope that each of us will look into the eyes of someone who is waiting for a smile, someone who needs love in a concrete way this Christmas. It's good to support worthy causes, even in an anonymous way. But let's also reach out to another by name and touch someone else's life in a very personal way. Thank you.